Are you just getting into stock photography and don't know where to start? Well, in today's video we'll go through some actionable steps I would take if I had to start this stock photography from scratch. So stock photography can be a great business and a lot of people are questioning can you make a living from it or how much can you actually earn or is it really possible to earn six figures a year? Well, I can assure you that it's possible, but it's not easy money and it's certainly not a get rich quick scheme. If you want to earn money fast, you can just stop this video and do something else instead. Stock photography is not a business where you earn money right away. But if you like photography and you're willing to put in the work, then you're in the right place. And also, as a bonus, I prepared a free checklist, a jumpstart guide where you'll have all the steps in one place in a simple PDF and there will also be links to my relevant videos next to those actionable steps and especially if you're new to stock photography, I think that guide can help you a lot. So just click on that link in the description and download it. Okay, and let's jump to those steps. Okay, first thing, this is a business and you want to treat it like a business. So what you want to do is you want to make a schedule for this stock photography business. You don't want to just say, yeah, I'll just try it and upload a few images every now and then. That just won't work. You'll find all the excuses why you haven't uploaded anything. If you have a regular job, you have to go there every day, right? You can just say, uh, I'm not feeling like going to work today, I'll just stay at home and watch TV. And you should treat your stock photography business the same way. Just show up every day and work on it. And when you make a schedule, you will more likely stick to it and you will progress much faster. Like I already mentioned in my videos, when I started, I woke up one hour earlier every single day before going to work at my regular job and work on my images. And also I worked a couple of hours in the evening every single day. And when you stick to your schedule, you will build a routine and you will grow much faster than if you just upload images when you have time or when you feel like doing it. Because something will always come up and you will be doing something else instead. Okay, next thing, you want to decide where you will sell your images and videos. You can upload and sell your images on multiple sites or you can decide to become an exclusive on iStock and only sell your images there. I have a whole video about exclusivity, why I'm only selling images on iStock and why this is the best option for me and I'll link it down in the description so you can check it after watching this video. But there are two things I see the most valuable about being exclusive contributor and I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. So me personally, if I started today, I would still decide to be an exclusive contributor on iStock. Now, next thing, when you decide all that, you will have to create an account on every agency you will upload to. And usually you will also have to upload some sample images so they'll see if you're good enough to sell your images there. It's not as hard as it used to be, at least on iStock. They're accepting much more than they did when I started. Me, for example, I was rejected six or seven times on iStock before they approved me as a contributor. And yeah, it was quite frustrating. Okay, so now you have an account, you can upload images. Now what? Well, obviously you want to upload some images. And probably if you like photography or videography, you already have some files sitting on your hard drive and you can upload those files. It can be nature, cityscapes, maybe some shots of your partner on vacation or something else. The point of uploading these images is not to make a lot of money, but to learn. Because you will have to learn a lot in the beginning about uploading process, keywording, all the legal stuff, modern property releases, retouching out all the logos on your images and similar. And let's talk a little bit about these things. So every image you upload to stock site goes through the inspection process. So the inspector will check every single image, check for logos or some other intellectual property issues. Also, if there are all the model and property releases attached, if they're filled correctly and so on. So for your images or videos to be accepted, you can't have any logos or other copyrighted material in your shots. So you'll have to retouch all the logos on 
clothing, on shoes, on technology and similar. Also, if there's an image or painting on the wall in the back, that's someone's artwork or intellectual property, so you can't have that in your shots unless you have a property release signed by the author. Also, if you have people in your images, you will need a signed model release for each shoot and you have to upload it with every single image. Similarly, if you're shooting in a house or even in front of a house, unless the location is not recognizable, you will need a property release signed by the owner and you have to attach that too. I have three videos about modern property releases where I go more in depth and I'll link them down in the description, so definitely check them out if you want to learn more. So during this you will already learn a lot, but of course not everything. You can also check Getty's site wiki.getimages.com where they list a lot of these legal issues that you want to avoid. For example, you can see that the Eiffel Tower is totally fine if you're shooting it during the day, but night shots when the lights are on are not acceptable on iStock because the light show is copyrighted. Or the Singapore flag, for example. It just won't be accepted on iStock. There are a lot of things listed here so you can see what you have to avoid, but but unfortunately that's not all. There are a lot of things that are copyrighted and not mentioned here and unfortunately you will learn most of these things from rejections. You will get some of your images rejected, that's a fact. But don't be afraid of those rejections, they're just part of the process. I still get images rejected sometimes. But the point is that they want to protect you from future claims. So even if you have images rejected, just learn from them and move on. Ok, so now you'll have some experience with the process and how it all works and now you can start with actually producing stock content. Like I said in a lot of my videos already, if you want to make money in stock photography, you should shoot lifestyle content with people. Well, you can still shoot nature, food or similar stuff if you like to, but to make some serious money you should shoot lifestyle content. And in the beginning when you're still learning, just start small. You don't want to invest tons of money into it, especially if you're quite new to photography because you're images just won't be that good. You'll have to learn a lot about composition, lighting and everything, so just start with small shoots. Tell your friends and family what you're doing and ask them if they can help you by being your models. Also, you don't want to invest a lot of money into locations, so you can shoot outdoors or at home or at your friend's house or maybe a friend of yours owns a small business where you can shoot for free. So just try to create as much content as you can like that. You can shoot business on the go, friends hanging out in the city, uh, running, exercising, people working from home, having fun at home, celebrating birthdays, cooking or similar. If you have access to a small business location, take advantage of that and shoot it there. So you really have a ton of possibilities. And I suggest you to produce at least one shoot per week in the beginning and upload all that content. Oh, and another thing I would like to mention here is shoot video. I understand if you're a photographer and you have never done video before, it can be a bit intimidating, but video is the future. Since I started doing stock photography, people on iStock have been telling us to shoot videos. And I just wish I had started with the video earlier. So nothing fancy here, just when you have the scene set up, shoot the video of that same scene. It can be handheld or you can just put your camera on a tripod. Whatever you do, it's better than nothing. If you want to know more reasons why you should shoot video, I have a video about that and I'll also link it down in the description. Now if you do all this in two months you'll have let's say 500 files online, so what I would do at this stage is I would apply to be an exclusive contributor on iStock. And probably a lot of people will disagree with me, but let me tell you why I would do that. So let's say you're uploading to 10 stock agencies. Each of those agencies has its own uploading and keywording system and it will take a lot of time to learn all that and even more to upload all those images to all those agencies. And I would rather spend all that time learning how to shoot and shoot more diverse content than about keywording and uploading. And the other main reason is, like I said, if you're exclusive you can shoot for custom content. So 
what is custom content? Well, custom content is when a company reaches out to iStock and tells them what kind of images they need. And those are big brands like Toyota, American Express or Visa for example. There are a lot of different briefs for custom content out there and when you shoot for that, if they buy your images, they will pay more because those images will be exclusive to them. So it will be a one-time sale and when they buy your images you will get the money right away and you don't have to wait for a year or so for your images to start selling. What's also good is that a lot of these custom content briefs are quite simple to do and they usually have specific requirements so you don't even have to come up with your own ideas. You just shoot whatever it says in the brief. And again, you can use your friends and family for those briefs. And even if you don't shoot for those briefs, just checking them and seeing what different clients are looking for will give you an idea of what kind of images might sell. So you can just shoot that kind of content and upload it as regular creative content. Another good thing about being exclusive is that you have access to other creative briefs. Because iStock has a team of people who are researching what's selling, what are the clients searching for, what kind of images they need and they put all that into different briefs. So if you don't know what to shoot, that's a great place to start. Okay, uh, let's move on. So another thing I would do at that time, so you don't have to spend money, is I would try to get models that are willing to work for free in exchange for the photos. And where can you find those models? Well, you can post on your Facebook or Instagram, or you can join some modeling related Facebook groups or use sites like Model Mayhem, for example. Well, if you're doing a construction shoot, models usually won't be willing to work for you in exchange for those photos. But what you can do is you can shoot some images for them, something that they can use in their portfolio and then some photos for you, maybe this construction shoot for your stock portfolio. And there will always be people who will be willing to do that, especially if they're just in the beginning of their modeling career. And you can do a similar thing for the locations. Try to find small businesses in your area and ask them if they need images for their business. And you can do a shoot for them for free in exchange for the location for your stock photo shoot. Sometimes they'll also be willing to sign the model releases, so you won't even need any models. Also, if you're shooting a very specific business like Blacksmith, for example, you don't want your own models there because they just don't know how to work with metal. So you can say to the owners that you're willing to work for them for free if they're willing to sign model and property releases. It's a win-win situation, so a lot of small businesses will be happy with that. Now, if you do what I told you consistently, in around five or six months you'll have quite some images and videos online and you will start to make some money from it. And when you do that, I want you to invest that money back into your business. So just take that money and hire some more models or new models or rent a better location. Because if you just shoot simple stuff, you won't be able to grow that much because everybody's doing that. So there are tons of images like that already online. So you want to go bigger. Plan shoots with more models and rent a more expensive location. Well, don't just rent the location because it's more expensive, but because it looks great. And when you have more shoots like that in your portfolio, this will differentiate your content from the others. Because there are tons of photos with, let's say, two models online, but a lot less content with 10 people, for example. Of course, you should also shoot simple things with one or two people because they can also sell very well if the content is right. But every now and then it's a good idea to shoot with more people. And the more money you're willing to invest back into your business like that, the more you can grow. So if you have a regular job, I suggest you to invest all that money from stock photography back into your shoots or maybe buy some equipment that will help you to produce better content and live from your salary from your 9 to 5 job. I did that in the beginning and I only quit my 9 to 5 job when my income from stock photography was twice as much as my salary at that job. And 
I suggest you to do the same. As I said, that won't happen overnight. For me, it took around three years of consistently producing and uploading stock photos, but then when I finally quit my 9 to 5 job and could focus all my time and energy on stock photography business, growth happened even faster. And if you follow these guidelines, I'm sure you can do the same. Now, if you want to reduce the costs of your stock photo shoots and make them even more efficient and also to progress faster, definitely check out this video here where I talk about how shooting with others can help you to earn more and reduce costs of your shoots and until next time stay awesome keep shooting and I will see you in my next video.